Hey, welcome to the greenhouse. I'm Alex. Let's go someplace completely different today. Let's go to Paris. Did you know that the Eiffel Tower is taller in the summer than in the winter? Its height changes by six inches due to thermal expansion of its iron structure. Most materials experience thermal expansion, like the juice in this bottle or the water in the ocean. Thermal expansion is the property that makes a thermometer like this one work. There's a reservoir full of alcohol connected to a very thin tube. When the temperature increases, the alcohol expands, forcing the liquid into the tube. The increase in volume is proportional to the amount of liquid and to the change in temperature. The constant of proportionality is called the coefficient of thermal expansion, which we label with the Greek letter beta. The coefficient of thermal expansion is the fractional change in volume of a material with each degree of temperature change. We can use the soda bottle to actually measure the coefficient of thermal expansion. But since the volume change will be bigger with a bigger starting volume, I'm going to use the wine bottle for this demo. A wine bottle holds 750 milliliters, so I'll use a graduated cylinder and I'll fill the bottle up. All right, we're gonna measure the temperature. We could do it with this thermometer, but I'm gonna use a thermometer that you put in an aquarium. To get our starting temperature, and I'm also gonna mark the starting level on the bottle. We're going to put this into a beaker on a hot plate. A pot on a stove would work too. And I'm going to set my thermometer here so we can watch it warm up. This prevents the bottle from breaking when we set it on the burner to heat up. We want to take it to about 50 degrees warmer than it is now. Okay, here's our final temperature. We subtract the initial temperature from the final to find the temperature difference, which is 54.3 degrees Celsius. So, now we've got to figure out what the change in volume is. And you can probably imagine a couple different ways to do this. What I'm gonna do is I've taken the hot water and dumped it out, and I've refilled the bottle to the original mark with cold water. And I have a graduated cylinder here filled with 50 milliliters of cold water. And what I'm going to do is very carefully pour this in until it gets to the second mark. There we go. Now I can subtract the new reading in the graduated cylinder, which looks like 33, from my 50 milliliters that I started with for a difference of 17. And that's what our change in volume is. Okay, here are the three things that we know. The volume change is 17 milliliters. The starting volume was 750 milliliters. The temperature change is 54.3 degrees Celsius. And here's our equation. To find the coefficient of thermal expansion, we need to do a little algebra and rearrange and then plug in our numbers. And we get a coefficient of thermal expansion of 0 0.00042 per degree Celsius. Now, Let's go back to the original equation, where the change in volume is equal to the coefficient of thermal expansion times the original volume times the change in temperature. We heated the water in the bottle through quite a large change in temperature, and we measured the change in volume, and we got the coefficient of thermal expansion mathematically. So what this means is that the volume expands with each little increase in temperature, and the size of the container also determines how much the volume changes. So we've calculated the coefficient of thermal expansion for water in this experiment, and the question is now, what do we do with it? The wine bottle has a pretty small volume when you're thinking about all the water in the world, right? But what if we use that coefficient of thermal expansion in a different situation, where we had quite a large volume of water, but maybe a smaller temperature change? 
then we could calculate the change in volume for something we care more about than water in a wine bottle. How about the water in the ocean? Let's take a look at that. If we're going to apply our coefficient of thermal expansion to different situations, there's one thing we need to realize, and that's that the coefficient of thermal expansion is not constant. It's not constant between different materials. The iron in the Eiffel Tower is going to expand differently from the water in the bottle, and that fresh water is going to expand differently than the salt water in the ocean. And the temperature range that we're working with and the pressure range that we're working with are all going to influence expansion. But that's okay because this is such an important parameter that engineers have done lots of experiments and we understand the coefficient of thermal expansion really well. So let's apply a thermal expansion calculation to the ocean. Okay, for the ocean, we're gonna calculate the change in volume for a particular temperature change. For this example, I've chosen 2 tenths of a degree Celsius. We also need to know the volume of the water in the ocean, which we can look up, 1.4 times 10 to the 18th cubic meters and we'll use a coefficient of thermal expansion that's appropriate for cold seawater, 0.00017 per degree C. Calculating the change in volume just involves plugging these numbers into our equation, and we've got our answer here, 4.76 times 10 to the 13th cubic meters. A much more interesting calculation would be to find the amount that sea level would rise because of this change in volume. To find that, we know that volume equals area times height, so height is volume divided by area, and we can find the amount of sea level rise, 0.13 meters, 13 centimeters, about five inches. So the math and physics of seawater tells us that if you warm the ocean, sea level will go up. There's no escaping this conclusion. Now let's put this number in context. One way to do that would be to find the sea level rise due to thermal expansion for some other temperature changes. And then we could look at projections made by climate scientists that arise from a warming ocean. So here we've got 0.3 degrees C and 0.4 degrees C and the rise from thermal expansion for each of those. It's important to realize that if we warm the ocean like this, we're also warming the continents. And any ice stored in continental glaciers and ice sheets is going to start melting as the climate warms. So the amount of projected sea level rise is going to be partly from the thermal expansion of ocean water and the rest from melting glaciers, with thermal expansion causing just under half of the increase. These are projections from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change for sea level rise by the year 2100. You can see that they range from about 1.3 to 2 feet. The basic material properties of water are defined by equations, and those equations allow us to ask questions about the future and to make projections. But is there any way to test those projections? The answer is yes. The physics of water is the same in the past, the present, and the future. So we can look at the past that we've already observed and see if that pattern fits our projection for the future. For example, we know that glaciers are melting. Here's a glacier in Switzerland, and marks on the valley wall show us where the ice used to be before it melted and flowed to the ocean. We can also look at records of sea level over the last hundred years. There are tide gauges that monitor sea level all over the world. These are the current measurements on the east coast of North America. Note that they're all going up. Let's go to Washington, D.C. The tide gauge here, near the tidal basin and the memorial to Thomas Jefferson, tells us that sea level is rising just over three millimeters per year. We can also look at the measurements of past records made at this station. We see that sea level has risen a little more than one foot in a hundred years. And while one foot may not seem like a large amount, it's enough to have a serious impact on Washington's waterfront monuments. This one foot rise in sea level now floods the paths and benches around the tidal basin at high tide, twice a day, every day. So think about what we've just done. Thermal expansion is easy to measure in a soda bottle in your kitchen, but it's important for people who live in coastal communities all over the world. So understanding the process of thermal expansion is really important. It's important as we plan our response for problems now, and it's even more important when we plan our response for the future.